This book is dedicated to the leaders and people of Jamaica, including first, second, third and fourth generation Jamaicans across the diaspora. Chapter 1 Governance and Public Debt in Jamaica Introduction to the Study 1 Chapter 2 Governance Fiscal Policy and Debt Theoretical Foundations 30 Chapter 3 Jamaica's Political Economy 1930s to Present with Barbados and Singapore as comparators 87 Chapter 4 Antecedents and Factors Contributing to Public Debt Accumulation in Jamaica 145 Chapter 5 Findings Public Debt and Governance in Jamaica 198 Chapter 6 Further Findings Comparators Jamaica, Barbados, and Singapore 236 Chapter 7 Conclusion 303 The Governance Public Debt Nexus A Case Study of Jamaica Use of petro Caribe Funds The governments of Jamaica and Venezuela entered into the petro Caribe Agreement on 29 June 2005 for Venezuela to supply petroleum products and crude oil to Jamaica. Gauge 2006. 40% of each payment made by Petrogem was to be converted to a 25-year loan, with a grace period of two years, when the price per barrel of oil was between 50 US dollars and 100 US dollars, and 35%, when the price was below 50 US dollars. The interest rate was 2% per annum, with the agreement being renewed annually. The cabinet decided on the 16th of January, 2006, to use proceeds from the petro Caribe fund to reduce the overall cost of domestic debt, reduce the cost of energy through alternative sources, upgrade and expand infrastructure, social programs targeted at the vulnerable, and modernization of sectors that could expand economic development through earning or saving foreign exchange. Gauge 2006. Unfortunately, the petro Caribe fund, like the National Housing Trust, NHT, was repeatedly tapped by the government for budgetary support, unrelated to their mandates. See Gauge 2014 C. 37. While funds were disbursed to distressed entities like the Sugar Company of Jamaica, Air Jamaica, and US $12 million to the government, Shaw 2008. 4. These governance decisions were clearly contrary to prudent fiscal management. There were also irregularities in the fiscal management of the related Jamaica Development Infrastructure Program, JDIP. According to the Auditor General 2011, the Jamaica Development Infrastructure Program on 29 June, 2010, Minister Shaw presented a government guarantee for a 15-15, year 6% loan of US $340 million from the Exim Bank of China, to finance road improvement and rehabilitation works, costing US $400 million. Jamaica was required to find 15%. The loan was to be serviced from a road maintenance fund, RMF, created by the Patterson administration in 1999, to accumulate revenues from a 31% tax on petrol. At that time, the JLP was accused of instigating what is now known as the 1999 gas riots which resulted in death and mayhem, and a rolling back of the tax, by 50%. Yet, by April 2009 the Golding-led JLP administration increased the burden on taxpayers by adding a special consumption tax, SCT of J$8.75 more per liter on fuel. He promised that 20% of this tax would be used for road maintenance. This was to be increased to 35% in 2010 and 50% in 2011 totaling J3 billion dollars. Minister Shaw reported that J4.8 billion dollars was collected through this SCT, with 960 million dollars being set aside for road maintenance. The governance. Public debt nexus. A case study of Jamaica 208 by March. 2011. He reported that $1.7 billion had been transferred from the SCT to the Road Maintenance Fund, RMF. However, a November 2011, Auditor General's AG investigation found that the amount transferred was really $667.186 million and $761.6 million directly to the National Works Agency, NWA, waivers totaling J1.25 billion dollars granted to three importers, from May 2009 to June, 2010, 
there was no evidence that there was consultation or prior approval by the relevant ministries and agencies. SCT funds were used to pay outstanding debts of the NWA, and, the projected cash flows from the Road Maintenance Fund, RMF could only service the first two years of the 15 years loan. The Auditor General concluded that these findings indicated instances of breaches of the Road Maintenance Fund Act and failure by the Ministry of Transport and Works to observe the wishes of Parliament. AG 2011. 12. Still, the SCT was again increased in 2015, even as the high cost of energy continues to undermine Jamaica's economic development, while roads constructed and repaired up to 2021, have been repeatedly undermined, eroded, or destroyed after periods of moderate to heavy rainfall lasting for less than 24 hours. Wasteful expenditure on energy The high cost of energy has been increasing the cost of doing business in Jamaica, and, contributed to Jamaica's indebtedness for decades. Meanwhile, politicians have continued to make repeated commitments to address this problem, while expending large sums of money on energy projects, without achieving the touted cost reduction objectives.